three statistical secrets that you need to know heading into the u.s grand prix welcome to the pit wall your stop for fantasy formula one content you can like and subscribe for more content like this i'm jay jack and let's go first statistical secret is streaks the race streak potential for this coming race is humongous. A swing of 50 additional points that you can get on your team. Let me kick it over to our spreadsheet so you can see this. Link will be in the description below. Under the column that says streaks, if someone is eligible for a race or quality streak, they'll highlight. As you can see, Norris, Perez, Botas, Sainz, Red Bull, and Mercedes are all eligible for race streak. That is plus 10 points if they have drivers finishing in the top 10. The reason why this is so important is because of the amazing community that is with me on my Twitter account at Relsic Racing. It shows up as Pitwall. Carter Cotton, shout out to you because you shared with me and I'm sharing with you guys now his lineup going into this Grand Prix because he is able to get all of those on his team. He's able to get Norris. He's able to get Botas. He's able to get Perez. He's able to get Signs. He's able to get Red Bull. So the difference is going to be who is your fifth driver? Who fills that sixth slot? For him, it is Gasly. And that's because he has a value of 108.9 million. When we get to the Pitwall picks, I'll share with you what I'm able to do with my budget but it is indeed possible to get plus 50 points just by getting those people on your team so take advantage that's your first statistical secret the second statistical secret are upgrades over the last few races people have been upgrading their engine beyond what they are allocated for the season and they take grid spot drops for this race we have Vettel who is getting a full engine upgrade he will be starting from the back same thing with Russell Do you notice a theme with Mercedes engine so why am I not surprised that Botas is also getting the exact same situation he is going to get a five grid place drop because as the FIA states in the rules your first engine upgrade will get you a 10 place grid drop but after that then it's only five and so this is my hypothesis Mercedes recognized that because of the reliability that's starting to happen with their engines and having to push them hard late into the season Botas is only able to keep up with the Red Bulls if he's getting max power and so they're giving him brand new engines with the idea that he can qualify high take the five grid place drop and then gain it back during the race with the superior engine power now you might want to know what does this mean for your team Botas can qualify high and get maximum points there and because he's getting the five grid place drop that doesn't count for losing places because for race points that is based off a of starting grid position and then final grid position and so he could get free bonus points like he did last couple races by coming back through the pack last driver to note is Sonoda you'll notice that he is having a change of form starting last race at the Turkish Grand Prix the commentators revealed this is because of two factors the first is that he now has a simulator at home and has been putting a lot of work in that simulator the second is that Alex Albon has been brought on to be his driver coach we saw the results of that in Turkey with the mixed wet conditions being able to hold back Hamilton at the beginning of the race and perhaps his pace will be unlocked and he can repeat a similar performance during the quality session for the U.S. Grand Prix. And then because it's dry, he'll be able to keep that pace going into the race. So Sonoda is someone to look out for, but he may not be the best choice if you have all these other drivers that are having the race streak options. Who is that sixth spot? The third statistical secret is drivers and constructors. Due to not wanting copyright problems, based off the screenshots I took during free practice session two, I won't be sharing them on screen, but I will be reading them off to you. Here is the development progression of the different constructors over the course of the season. Mercedes is fastest. They didn't share how much they gained or lost, but Red Bull and almost every other constructor has lost over the course of the season. AlphaTauri, on the other hand, has gained 0.05 seconds per lap over the course of their development cycle. That is why, considering Gasly, Sonoda, due to him being cheaper than Gasly or having that as your sixth driver option could be a potential option but then that's why we want to look at what is the lap times at the end of free practice session two you have to recognize that they are very careful on how they are doing the lap times for quality this race if there is a double waved yellow flag, all lap times of cars in that sector deleted. If there's any track limit, deleted. This is why what I'm sharing with you is not exactly how it looked at the end of the free practice session two. But here's the graphic. 
Currently on pace at the end of free practice session two, we had Verstappen going fastest with a 141.3 seconds on mediums, 10 laps old. Hamilton was 0.3 seconds slower on three lap old mediums. Behind Verstappen, but above Hamilton is Stroll, but he was on softs. So you would want to take that with a grain of salt. Then right after Hamilton was Perez, 0.2 seconds slower, medium tires as old as what Verstappen had. And then we had Vettel on hard tires, lapping the same pace as Perez. So don't sleep on the Aston Martin, but recognize that Vettel is starting from the back of the grid. So he's probably trying an alternative strategy. The last thing I'll say about Vettel with his engine penalty, if he's able to qualify high, he leads the league right now in most passes over the course of a season. If you get up to five passes, that's 10 points that you're able to get bonus based off your performance during the race. Is that worth having him as your sixth driver when you have the other five drivers and the constructor giving you race streak bonuses? Perhaps, but that is up to you to make that decision. Now for my points pick, I believe Perez with his pace, having a race streak, he is a high contender for being turboed this coming race. My value pick and points pick would go the signs. Not only is he eligible for the plus 10 points for his race streak, he's cheaper than Leclerc, and he's lapping really well with that brand new engine that he got last race. And then we have Red Bull. Some people might look at Ferrari and McLaren and say, can we get those constructors, which are cheaper options to Red Bull or Mercedes? But here's the problem. Mercedes and Red Bull both get a plus 10 for race streak. So it'd be really unlikely, unless you have DNFs, for them to be a worse option than Ferrari or McLaren. The problem is Mercedes is a little too expensive. So it seems like the solid option for your points and value would be Red Bull. It's now time for my picks. I have two teams that I run over the course of the season. Team one is where I try to make the minimal amount of substitutions. And that's where I try to run the numbers, run the odds as they go and be steady. Team two is where I do my day trading. Team two's value currently is at a 108.7 million. And my team one is at a 106 flat. But as you can see that there is roughly a 200 point difference between them. And that's based off of making decisions over the course of the season. This is where your day trading is gonna make a big difference because on team two, I already made a substitution. I went from Red Bull to McLaren to get 0.1 million advantage. The problem is I had to switch back to Red Bull, which means that I've used two substitutions for that day trading, which means that I cannot take advantage of getting, like what Carter Cotton mentioned, all those race streak option drivers. So team two is looking like it's going to have to be stuck there. I have Perez, I have Norris, and I have Red Bull. If I wanted to, I could switch Leclerc off to Signs, which would actually probably be a safe option because you have signs at 304 points, Leclerc at 304 points, and signs has that race streak option. That'll be my last substitution. Man, I usually don't like to save it. Maybe I should have waited a little bit longer, but now you saw it. I saved it live. That means now I have four out of the five. Botas would be the last one. This now brings me to race team one. I have all three of my substitutions here. So I can drop Verstappen and pick up Botas. I can drop Leclerc and pick up Sainz. And I can drop Gasly and pick up Perez and I have 3.2 million left over. Those are my three substitutions. The problem is because I don't day trade with team number one, I don't have the extra 2 million necessary to have someone better than Russell. If you are able to afford a better driver in your fifth spot, that could make the difference this race weekend if everyone else is running this meta for this race. And this is where I will then have to make the feeling who will I turbo drive? I am leaning towards Perez, and that's probably who I'll end up going with. But if you check free practice session three, and it seems like Perez suddenly is nowhere, Norris was right behind him during free practice session two. So he might be a safe one to stay with, or maybe Sign suddenly comes through and surprises. Last thing I'll say about this, the reason why the day trading made a big difference for me is because right here, if you would like to join us on a one race challenge, you don't have to worry about trying to catch up or anything. You submit one team. We have 15 entrants, but because I made the league, I always make it with team two and I need to start making it with team one because for whatever reason, it will not let me. Of course, I can drop and say I add it, but when I hit save, it doesn't save. And so I am running a team that's not the meta for this race. So my chance to get on the podium ceremony at the end of next pod podcast would be less likely. Here's the code. You can find the link in the description and the code there. And like I said, if you place in the top three, then you get a special podium ceremony and the top step actually gets to hear their national anthem at the end of the next Pitwall podcast. 
And there you have it, three statistical secrets that you need to know heading into the US Grand Prix, my home Grand Prix, but also looking at the race streak strategy. And like I said, I believe it's all gonna come down to who do you turbo drive and then who is your fifth driver filling that sixth slot on your team. That can make the biggest difference going into this race weekend. And until next time, I'll see you on the pit wall.